Hello and welcome to the LA Memorial Coliseum for the NASCAR Clash at the Coliseum. I'm Jay Ward, the creative director of Cars at Pixar Animation Studios, and I'd like to talk a couple Cars fun facts with you today. This is the first time that NASCAR has done the Clash somewhere besides the Daytona International Speedway since 1979, so I'm really excited to be here. And it reminds me about a lot of cool things we did making the movie cars 15 years ago, so let's talk about that. So this is the first time that NASCAR has ever raced at the LA Coliseum. But did you know we featured a race in cars that was a lot like this? If you remember the Los Angeles Motor Speedway from cars where Lightning McQueen, Chick Hicks, and The King have a three-way race, well, it was kind of inspired by this place, as well as some other tracks in the area. And now NASCAR's really racing here. Pretty cool, right? Good job! So did you know that the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum takes its inspiration from the real Coliseum in Rome. They've even got one of the blocks from the real Roman Coliseum right here. How cool is that? When we worked on cars, we looked at architecture from all over the world and we tried to carify it or make architecture for all these different locations we go to in our movies. So we took all those elements of architecture and made them look like they would in a cars world. Kind of a neat little trick we do. Did you know when we were working on Cars 3, we knew that a next-gen NASCAR racer was coming, but it wasn't out yet. We had to design Jackson Storm from scratch, and the idea was to make him look as advanced as possible so McQueen felt obsolete right away. I wonder how Jackson Storm would do against the real next-gen NASCARs. Speaking of next-gen, this life-size Lightning McQueen is a little bit of a next-gen himself. The original life-size Lightning McQueen we built for the first cars was way back in 2006. This is a much improved version that we built in 2017 for the premiere of Cars 3 where we drove it up on the stage at the Detroit Auto Show. You know, he's a couple years old now, but he still looks pretty good to me. Here's another fun fact about the NASCAR Clash. They're racing on a quarter mile oval. That's short for even a short track. When we were working on Cars 3, we were trying to find a home for Thomasville, the track that Doc Hudson sort of cut his teeth on, so we looked at a lot of short tracks in the NASCAR community. One that really inspired us was the North Wilkesboro Speedway, a now abandoned NASCAR track that had a really eerie, kind of special feeling to it when we went to go visit it. We thought, wow, this could have been the place where the fabulous Hudson Hornet learned how to race. And as Smokey is explaining that to Lightning McQueen, you really get a feeling you're on hallowed ground when you're there. I'm starting to think I might never meet you. Smokey? He is alive. Did you know that we took inspiration for Jackson Storm from real next-gen racers? That's right, there's a whole generation of racers coming up now in NASCAR that trained on simulators rather than racing on the dirt or short tracks first, unlike Lightning McQueen. So we figured, why not go new school against old school? Simulator versus dirt. Which one are you? You have crashed. You have crashed. Are you all right? You have crashed. I have crashed. Do you know how loud it is at a real NASCAR race? You can't even hear the person next to you talking. When we made the movie Cars, we made sure to record real NASCAR engine sounds so it feels like you're really at a race. We even recorded a V8 engine for Lightning McQueen's motor sound. How cool is that? I'm Jay Ward, and thank you for joining me at NASCAR's Clash at the Coliseum as we took a trip down Cars memory lane. I hope you had as much fun as I did. See you on the road. Ciao, my name is Guido Quaroni, and I used to work as a technical director for many years at Pixar Animation Studios. But also, some of you may know, I gave the voice of a beautiful, lovely character called Guido in the Cars movies. Guido, please stop! I wanted to share with you some fun facts about Guido today. So let's get ready and let's go. So Guido, the character and I, share some similarities. We're kind of both Italian, we're both from Monza, that is known for the Formula One racetrack. And when they asked me to provide the scratch voice for Guido during the early phase, uh, when there was, we were working on the storyboard of the movie, the story reel, I guess they liked the way I said, pit stop. And then they decided to keep me for the whole duration of the project, all the way into the final movie. So now, every time I, I see Guido, somebody mentioned Guido, the character, I always feel like, like you know, there's a part of me that is with that character. So as you know, Guido and I doesn't share just the voice, but actually we have the same name. I suggested this name back in the early days because when you say, I drive, the translation in Italian is Io Guido. So I thought it's actually a perfect name for a car. And they were a little bit surprised at the beginning because coincidentally it was also my name, but then they thought it's perfect. You know, same name, same person, same voice. So that was super exciting. Oh, Guido, che bellissimo. Che cosa? It looks great. Ah, ti piace? This is great. Si, si, bellissimo. Guido, it's really a unique forklift. 
it wasn't taken from an existing uh, real forklift, but actually it was a design that was inspired by the forklift of the 50s and the 60s. And it really had a, an Italian flavor to it. And even the beret, you know, was actually shaped like a little hat. The colors and everything really tried to bring us into the Italy's of the 50s and, and 60s. And so it was great to see. And even the whole design, the whole project was done in Italian. So when all the drawings and everything, every term, every name was actually had an Italian name, you know, pneumatici, uh, uh, finestrino, all these names that are Italian, they're like wheels and windows, etc., were all Italian pretending that this was actually a blueprint coming from an Italian factory back in the 60s. So on top of giving the voice to Guido, I also had the opportunity to work on the actual model itself. I was in the texturing and shading department, so I work on all the materials for the body of the car, the, the tires, uh, the, the kind of the logo. So it was really part of the process, you know, reviewing with the director, changing, you know, little details here and there, the scratches, the paint, the grease and everything. And on top of that, there was a sequence where Guido had to have kind of a nice wig, you know, so I said, okay, here we go. I got this as a, as a reference. They gave me this wig and I was responsible also to put the hair on uh, Guido's head. Even more, uh, after working on it, it was really, really felt, you know, I was really part of me in a way because it was really, when I was watching on the screen, I knew things that I actually specifically did. So there is another interesting fact, you know, if you look carefully, the brand for Guido is Alza Facile. And it was, we, we thought about actually having something that really conveyed the strength of, of Guido, even if it's a small forklift. Alza Facile means lift easily. And so we, we even spent the time to think about the logo and the design that to have some, you know, it has a little bit of an Italian flag there. And that was kind of a, the name again, once again, everything had to be Italian. Even the tires were actually branded and the name was Tortellini Tire. If you've seen cars, you realize that Guido speaks a little bit of English, a little bit of an Italian. And it really depends who is talking to him. You know, sometimes he just answer in English if uh, they're speaking in Italian or in Italian if they're speaking in English. It's a little bit of a contrarian. You know, clearly pit stop is an English one, but once, you know, while through the movie, you actually hear him talking and saying things, especially when he gets a little agitated and upset, he starts speaking in Italian. And, you know, hopefully some of you may have understood what he says, uh, you know, in those words. Why the tires are here? Sono sempre stati qui. They were better when they were before. Stai sempre parlando. Growing up in Monza, I really lived, you know, every year the Formula One Grand Prix. And this is really the temple. The Monza is the temple of Ferrari. You know, they won many, many times. So all the fans that really go there for this uh, big event uh, in September. And so seeing like Guido and Luigi to be big fans, it was so exciting with their flags, you know. And then at the end, you know, really see them, you know, when a Ferrari really arrives, at their shop, they're completely like, you know, they, Guido actually passes out. And probably I wouldn't be surprised if I could almost pass out if I'm in front of a Ferrari Formula One driver. Hi, Lightning McQueen told me this was the best place in the world to get tires. How about setting me and my friends up with three or four sets each? <gasps> Guido, there is a real Michael Schumacher Ferrari in my store. A real Ferrari! Punch me, Guido. Punch me in the face. This is the most glorious day of my life. Wow. Spero che il tuo amico si riprenda. Mi dicono che siete fantastici. Thank you for letting me share all these fun facts about Guido. It was truly an honor to be part of that journey and ultimately give the voice of this great character. And who knows, maybe there is some new adventure in the future. But until then, I'm just going to say thank you and pit stop. Hey there, Cars fans, and welcome to another exciting episode of Bumper to Bumper, the only show where your favorite characters from the world of cars go head to head with their real life counterparts. I'm your host, Langston, and today we have a show so exciting, you might need to call a doctor. Wait, what are we talking about here? Ah, oh, well. Today, we have the fabulous Hudson Hornet, Doc Hudson, going up against his greatest challenge yet real world doctors. I'm joined today by two very different doc experts. Each will show up their knowledge to determine who is the ultimate doc. Doc Hudson or doctors? Let's get to it. Representing the legendary Doc Hudson, we have Pixar Cars creative director, Jay Ward. 
Welcome, Jay. Hi there. Happy to be back on the show. And representing actual doctors, my good friend and amateur doctor enthusiast, Taj. Just what the doctor ordered. Well, I'm not sure what the doctor ordered, but I hope we find out. All right, so here's how this is going to work. There will be five rounds where each of you will have a chance to share one fact. I'll be moderating this discussion, and at the end of each round, I'll be awarding a point to the coolest, most awesome, unbelievable fact. Whoa, 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 you're keeping points? I, I thought this was just fun facts. I'm ready to lay down some facts with surgical precision. Let's do this. Round one. All right, Jay, impress me. All right, here's one for you. Now, you know Doc is pretty old. In fact, he's a 1951 Hudson Hornet, but the car was very advanced for its time. It was built with a low center of gravity, so when it was racing, it could really fly around the corners. How about that? Josh, thoughts? Let me check my pulse. Hmm. Nope, that fact did nothing for me. You think Doc is old? The practice of medicine is incredibly old. There's even records of Egyptian doctors performing surgery over 5,000 years ago. Now that's old. Wow, that is old, and that's definitely a point for Taj. Booyah! Oh, hold on, we're really doing a points thing on this? I mean, we're comparing Doc Hudson with doctors? This is crazy. Uh, don't worry about it, Jay. Next fact, please. Okay, how about this one? Did you know that Doc Hudson is a three-time Piston Cup winner? In fact, he won three in a row. In the sports world, they call that a three-peat. That is a very difficult achievement, no matter what sport you're in. You know what's even harder to do three years in a row? Residency. Doctors have to do what is called residency for three to seven years after graduating from medical school. Medical residents work in doctor's offices or hospitals to continue their education and medical training in a specialized field. Now that is hard work. Residency definitely sounds tough. Point for Taj again. Jay, bring the heat this time, man. Okay, how about this one? Doc Hudson's license plate is 51HHMD. That actually stands for 1951 Hudson Hornet medical doctor. So in a way, his license plate is really like a medical name badge. How about that fact? I guess that's kind of cool, but still not even close to the amount of abbreviations doctors might have. Every different doctor has their own abbreviation. There's MD for medical doctor, DDS for doctor of dental science, MS for master of surgery, and so many more. Taj, you might as well be an MP. Master of points. That's one more point for you, buddy. Jay, let's grab us some more Doc facts. Okay, how about this one? Doc Hudson runs the Ornament Valley Mechanical Clinic, where he is a doctor of internal combustion. But he's also the town judge. That means Doc has to do two jobs. He's the doctor fixing up the cars, and he's also the judge for the town. Pretty interesting, right? Oh, real doctors can do this too. Lots of doctors can get certified in different subspecialties of medicine. Even cooler though, there are lots of lawyers out there who have also become medical doctors. How do they find the time? Both excellent facts. But uh, I think I'm gonna have to give this round to Taj though. Are you kidding me? Score! Jay, your points are in critical condition. But how about one more fun duck fact? All right, how about this one? Do you know why Doc Hudson was so good at racing on dirt? Well, it turns out that back in the day, many of the old stock car tracks were dirt surface tracks. So they really had to know how to turn left to go right on dirt covered tracks, even sand. They used to race right on the beach of Daytona and that's why the Hudson Hornet was such a great race car. Dirt is one thing, but how about space? That's right, there are some doctors that have to work in space. They're called flight surgeons and they handle any medical issues that arise before during or after space flight. That fact was out of this world. How are you ever gonna recover from this, Jay? Well, it was a good fact, but look, I'm just here for fun. I bet. Um, well, congrats on your big win today, Taj. Just doing my job. And special thanks to Jay Ward for stopping by with some fun doc facts. Anytime, thanks for having me. See you all next time on Bumper to Bumper. Bye. Bye. Hi everybody, I'm Jay Ward from Pixar Animation Studios. I'm the creative director for Cars, and today I want to share with you some of my favorite fun facts from the first Cars movie. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Here's an interesting fact for you. You guys probably know that Lightning McQueen's number is 95, but did you know where that number came from? We used the number 95 because that's the year that Toy Story came out, 1995, and that became Lightning McQueen's racing number.
Have you ever noticed in the opening race that Lightning McQueen has a red arrow pointing to him that tells his points? Also, the king has a blue arrow pointing to him with his points, but Chick Hicks arrow, the green one, doesn't quite line up with Chick Hicks. It's a little bit off, just like Chick Hicks is. It's a small joke we put in there just for fun and most people will probably never notice it, but now you know. Now that's what I'm talking about. Many Pixar fans know that the number A113 appears somewhere in Pixar films. Do you know where it appears in Cars? It's on the back of Mater. It's his license plate. Oh, wait a minute! A113 was the room number of an animation school that many of our artists attended that ended up going to Pixar. Here's an interesting fact for you. Flo's V8 Cafe and Radiator Springs. There are spark plugs on the roof of Flo's that light up. Did you know that those plugs are lighting up in the sequence of a real V8 engine? We did that just for those gearheads that might happen to catch it. In the world of cars, we tried to create a lot of things from a car's perspective. And one of those things was clouds. The next time you're watching cars, look up and you'll see that the cloud patterns actually look like tire treads. When Lightning McQueen is trying to race on dirt for the first time, he flies off the road and lands into a batch of cacti. If you look over to the right-hand side, one cactus has a branch in the shape of a car, kind of hidden. That same cactus branch in the shape of a car also appears in Sally's Cozy Cone Motel. There's a lot more to racing than just winning. At the end of the opening race, Lightning McQueen pulls into the pits to get his tires changed. You may not have noticed, but he puts on tires with treads. The reason we did that was we knew later on he would get lost in Radiator Springs and he would need treaded tires to be able to drive around on city streets and on the dirt. And that's why we did that. Lightning McQueen here, and I use Rusty's Medicated Bumper Ointment new rear end formula. In the Rusty's Medicated Bumper Ointment ad, Lightning McQueen is next to a rusty green car with the license plate Evil. That's a nod to Emeryville, California, the hometown of Pixar Animation Studios. As Mac and Lightning McQueen head to California for the big race, they go down the road and past a telephone wire with a bunch of birds lined up on it. And it goes by so quick, if you blink, you'll miss it. Those are the same bluebirds from the Pixar short for the birds. Did you know that only one car in Radiator Springs has a front license plate? What? It's Fillmore. He's got a license plate mounted below his front bumper that looks a little bit like a goatee. 